So for the past three months, Catherine and Craig Smith have been terrorised every time they step foot in the garden, and it's all because of their unruly pet duck, Donald. Take a look at this. <laughs> Catherine and Craig oh. have bravely ventured into the garden now to join us. And is that uh, there, him? Is, there is Donald. He's been very tightly held. <laughs> uh, morning, both. Yeah. Morning, morning. Phil. Ollie. Um, Good yeah, morning. So, oh, and you've also got Woody, the um, Woody, the, the dog there as well, uh, who's the one that's that's, that's being terrorised. Yeah, oh, well, they, in fact, like, everyone is. So, this is a pet <laughs> duck that you have reared from a, a, an egg. Uh, yes, we. He's been. Um, We've had him when uh, we had two older ducks. Um, we bought them when they were a few months old. They then went on to have uh, 10 babies. And so these are the eight year old. We kept two eight year old babies and he's one of them. And he's one of them. So when did you first notice that he had a bit of an attitude problem here? Um, probably when they just about as they get to a year old, he started to get very territorial in the garden. So is this is it because springtime is sexy time for a duck? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, it, it's particularly bad at the moment. Usually from the end of March to the end of July, he's quite feisty because he's protecting his female. Um, but but then he's the rest of the year he's quite protective of the garden. So uh, when friends come round, they'll get an odd nip. They're in the garden. <laughs> yeah, I think Woody's telling him off here. He's going, yeah, you're being outed on national <laughs> telly for being a bad duck. Um, but he does nip and he does make people bleed. He does, he, he does. does. Yeah. He, um, he gets you, he chases, usually if I'm hanging the washing out in the morning, he'll chase me, uh, nip my feet, he squeezes the top of your skin and twists it. Um, he's been known <sighs> to, when you're on a sun lounger, if there's a gap between the bottom of the chair, and the back of the chair, he'll come up when you least expect it and nip you on the bum as well. And so you've you've got a St Bernard, which is 14 stone, <laughs> and he'll have a crack at the St Bernard as well. <laughs> yeah, he, he he's yeah awesome. he's quite happy to have a go at Ludo. Ludo's um, we have to take Ludo in the garden. We have to go with him because he's so scared of him. Oh my gosh! And also, but not only the animals, <laughs> uh, you, you, the mother-in-law as well, Glennis. Uh, Donald doesn't like Glennis. Yes, he's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. He um, has had her pinned in the corner of the garden on numerous occasions. And, and what is it? What, what is it? And we do. What we is it about Glennis? What's the, what's the problem with Glennis? I don't know, actually, but he does. He gets, he ch he'll chase her up the garden and then pin her in the corner of the garden. Um, and we do rescue her eventually. So what would happen if you put them both down now? Um, if Anything you don't get a stage fright, I could, yeah, let's give it a go. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, that's quite calm. That's quite calm. I mean, is that his... Oh, it, no, uh, he's got <laughs> stage fright. He's got yeah, stage fright and he's gone away. Okay, well, enough. listen, um, we, we, we don't know whether or not you can train a duck, but we're going to ask the person who would know. We're hoping animal psychologist uh, Roger Mugford might be able to shed some light on Donald's bad behaviour. Roger, it's always lovely to talk to you. So, just firstly, I mean, we talked about spring here. Is this quite common behaviour for ducks at this time of year? It is. And if you go down to the river, the stream or the lake, you'll see lots of male mallards um, beating up one another, very aggressive. It's the time when they, well, they pass the time when they're competing for females. The females are all mated. They're sitting on nests. So there are a lot of very frustrated bachelor males doing just what Donald is doing. Um, and of course, he's imprinted on humans. He thinks he is a sort of human, sort of dog, sort of spaniel. Um, and uh, it's because he was brought up with humans. So he's got no natural fear. Do you remember Conrad Lorenz with his geese? Well, he, he invented the concept of imprinting, and this duck is imprinted on humankind. It, it thinks it's as much a human as a duck. So can you, um, um, can you train a duck? 
Well, <laughs> it is a seasonal related thing. So the easiest way to train him would be to keep him behind wire and keep him apart from that poor little dog um, who I feel sorry for. But yes, you can. Um, just as you can train chickens, you can train insects, actually. But you know, using a clicker, using the right sort of treat here. So I've got some food uh, and throw this into a corner, into an enclosure. And the duck can be trained to go to that enclosure in order to receive the food. And every time he does the right thing, you associate it with a click. We use it on chickens. Chickens can be taught to spell, to, to le le recognize words and, and all sorts of other uh, interesting concepts. I never say a, an animal is bird-brained. They're as intelligent as, well, the, you are in, clever in organizing the training regime. But if you, we're just looking at the pictures now of the duck. Uh, Donald is having a swim. Um, Woody is just looking there, wagging his tail. This is a game. He may be being chased all the time, but this is a game for the dog as well, it isn't is. it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, these are two uh, semi-bored, frustrated ducks. Uh, and uh, to chase a dog that runs and runs is just the greatest game on the planet. Here we go. And the game is on. Uh, and... Dun, dun. Where's the boy with the glockenspiel to play the chase? Dun, and, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> mother-in-law mother in law too by walking away one would say if it was a dog well you can always protect yourself with a water pistol but i don't think it would work on a duck so well it may have to, it's, it's some other form of discouragement but um it is really nice to see oh, these he's, getting the cameraman. he's having a go at our cameraman's feet socially distanced please donald thank you uh, i think you'll have to pay some danger money to <laughs> this yeah. brave cameraman yeah, I um, yeah, I'm not sure that anyone can be helped there, other than uh, other than the fact that you say maybe try the clicker. Um, but I didn't realise you could, did. You say you could train insects. Yeah, what have you trained? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but, I mean, well, it, it, insects and, and uh, octopuses have been a, a favourite species for studying uh, animal learning. I mean, they're very intelligent. They've got a very simple brain, a uh, few ganglia compared to a mammal. But, but, of course, the same is true of insects. So, uh, you know, uh, horn beetles live in dung pats and so on, could be trained too. Um, but you just got to organise the right sort of stimulus. So anyone who says they can't train their dog or can't train their teenage daughter, uh, then, you know, say, well, look at, the, look at the world of animals and animal learning. And, and of course, uh, animals have to learn in order to survive. Yeah. Well, thank you, Roger. Thank you very there much. You go. If you've got trouble you. with your teenage daughter, get a clicker. <laughs> Just a clicker will do it. That, that's the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Catherine and Craig. Thank you as well. Stay safe. <laughs> nice to meet Donald. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Bye-bye, you two. Bye-bye. Right, that bye -bye. cameraman will be very relieved that he can get out of there now. Bye. bye. bye.